Alrighty. Hello. Hopefully, this isn't too loud. Uh, you might have noticed that I've changed things up a bunch. I decided that sitting was not the greatest thing while I'm doing these, because I sit enough during the day, and on top of that, it's also very hard to work with everything when it's... I've got this camera down here right in my face all the time. So I figured I'd change things up, and I've got some lighting now. Ooh. I had this lighting before, just in a different place, but look, I can go red or whatever color I want, but we'll stick with blue, it's easiest to see. So, uh, hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, I had an epiphany <laughs> quote going through this. This, just as a reminder, this is what we ended with on the last stream. And having listened to this again now, I realized I like very little of this. Maybe some parts of it, maybe, but generally very little. So I think I'm just going to tear a lot of this out. I was especially, I think, frustrated by the fact that that this background noise uses so many huge, complex modules. And I really wanted it to be something better. Actually, you know, we are missing one thing here. I think this was on the... Yeah. It was a little more complex. But even so, I don't... Uh, I don't think it's, it's worth the number of modules I, quote, spent making it. So, I think that I'm just going to pull a whole bunch of stuff out. So, uh, I will just get to that. While we're doing that, maybe a brief discussion because I always feel like I've, I don't know, done something wrong or something like that when I end up having to pull a whole ton of uh, stuff out or like scrape things right the way back to the beginning. But I'm slowly learning that really it's you can acknowledge that there's something that you don't like, sometimes it can be good to start straight from the beginning again. Um, very least it gives you a clean slate, and I mean modular forces you to do that a lot of the time, right? Oh, must have pulled out a uh, trigger. <laughs> yeah, I mean modular doesn't persist, so sometimes you just lose stuff anyway, but it's nice to lose it in a, uh, in a controlled fashion instead. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, and that like use that use so many cables for not being all that particularly complex. So yeah, hence not particularly happy with it. So what I thought that I would do, by the way, had a bit a few ideas. Um, one of which was to perhaps uh, I realized that I don't really have any way to do arpeggiation in my system right now. But then I realized that. Uh, Disting Mark IV has this Quantizer 2 mode, very descriptively named, but it um, is a quantizer, but you can also choose the scale as you can with most quantizers. Hey, Nightworks! Uh, yeah, you can choose the scale as with most quantizers, and you can uh, choose what notes in that scale you are actually using, so that can pretty much be used as an arpeggiator. Thanks for the host, I appreciate it. All right, we're getting there. The tearing out is nearly complete. Just want to make sure I leave in some of the control voltages uh, from uh, the little modular bot. But actually, I may move those too. So I'm going to keep the run in the clock into PAMS. Um, I won't keep this trigger for now. Hello, Jeff for real. Good to see you. I should also note, by the way, that I think that I am probably going to stop attempting to stream on Mondays because it either it generally it either doesn't work out or there's also a lot of other people doing a lot of other cool content on Wednesdays and I feel like it's it's a little overly saturated already, so I don't want to uh, 
contribute to more saturation, if you know what I mean. So I'll probably be dropping those days and just doing Wednesdays and Saturdays from here on out, I would suspect. Okay. We're almost there. Uh, still keep the reverb in because it's always good. And there. There. <laughs> All right, reset. We'll never hear that sound that I made last time ever again. <laughs> okay, so like I was saying, Quantizer, uh, Quantizer 2 in the distings. So I also, also finally figured out how to make this happen. So you can actually see a browser window. Yay. So that's Quantizer 2. We're going to try setting this up. H8 is the mode. So as I understand it, we have to uh, let me just get my mouse over there so we can see. Yeah, we need to uh, uh, the uh, the command has changed a little bit. Let me show you. It's not controlling anything right now though. Once I hook things up, it sure will be. That, that modular bot has gradually been changing. <laughs> okay, so we've got X is a pitch input, Y is either a trigger or a second CV input as a, like an addition. And then you have to change these parameters to get the, the scale, the key, and the pattern set up. So for sake of argument here, let's use um, We'll do parameter one and we'll make it uh, we're gonna make parameter one which is this scale. We'll try a harmonic minor. And then parameter two sets the key to quantize into. So what should we do for key? I don't know. What haven't I used very often? How about B? Why not? All right, so parameter and B is parameter value of five. Done. How do I get it from the chat window to my setup? Ah, yeah, okay, so, um, yeah, I'm a software developer in real life, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Uh, but so I wrote a little chat bot that works with Twitch. Um, it listens to the chat, yeah. Uh, where it listens to the chat and listens for those commands and then uh, ornament and crime uh, here you can see this little USB cable is connected to my computer um, and yeah the bot takes the chat stuff and sends it into ornament and crime and ornament and crime converts it from MIDI to CV that's how that works okay so we set this to B and then parameter zero defines the quantizer path yeah, you totally can. I mean, you have to, uh, you have to connect it through that stupid um, rear USB thing that's like inaccessible. But that's why I want to replace this with a one UOC because it ends up connected to the IntelliJ case and all that. But yeah. Okay. Number zero is the pattern, the selection of notes from the scale that are available for the CV to adopt. <laughs> the user interface to editing this pattern is unique to this algorithm. Great. Okay, so we're in around parameter zero. It says when the parameter zero is current parameter, current turn the S knob scrolls through the degrees of the scale, one to seven for a major scale. Next to the number of the scale degrees of plus, which indicates the degree is included in the quantizer pattern, or dot which indicates it is not pressing the s knob toggles between these two states oh okay so let's see how easy it is to s wow i gotta change the uh the uh, the light sensitivity on this it's hard to read this screen if i uh, wave my finger in front of it it makes it easier to read 
So, all right, we were on parameter zero. Yeah, so you can maybe see one is included, two is included, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so seven is included. Let's, I don't know, um, what did it say? Did it say that it was, yeah, the degrees of a scale. Okay, so oof, music theory. Let's just, let's, let's turn, let's actually, let's just leave it as is for now. This will just be the whole scale and just see if we can at least get like an ascending, descending kind of thing with an, if we drop an LFO into here. Um, so very simply we can just take a tetrapad LFO into X and then we'll send that out to uh, which one is the out? Which one is the out? Imagining it's A or B. Oh yeah, A is yeah, A and B are both quantized CV outs, but one you can offset from the other. So we'll just take A for now. And we'll put that into I don't know, I guess rings. Actually no, let's since I just tuned it, let's do the CSL. That CSL had drifted so out of tune. Right? They are a little bit loose. Like, it's kind of scary, especially on the back. If you touch the back of them, they're like all wiggly all over the place. All right. Well, let's take the wave folder. See what we get out of that. Uh, I should say. Whoa. That sounds horrible. Why does that sound so bad? Let's turn down the gain and everything. Wow, that sounds... Something about that sounds horrific. <laughs> yeah, I had that impression that we might see something like that too, but I guess not. Damn, I feel like... Actually, you know what? Let's not do ornament and crime because, or not ornament and crime, uh, CSL because it's just going to go unquantized. We should really get a trigger out of this, but if we do it with um, rings, it will uh, into the vault per octave. It'll <laughs> it'll still do something crazy, obviously. <laughs> what I really need actually is maybe not a uh, LFO but a fader. Let's do that. And let's put it on non polyphonic mode. Okay. So let's turn off some of these notes. I don't know, let's turn off two and four and six. Maybe that gives us a like harmonic or a minor seventh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I changed my mind. Let's go back to um let's go back to not pattern, I want uh, scale. Let's go back to just major scale. Sounds like a seventh, I think. Okay, so proved functional. Now, can we do anything useful with it? <laughs> so, if we wanted to use this as an arpeggiator, which was kind of what I was intending, we need um, we need a set of increasing values and decreasing values, but we need it to increase and decrease, like uh, in lockstep. So, we sort of need a we need a sample and hold is what we need. So, um, let's see, what can I use for that? I think that you can use Shifty for that. I've never tried it. Shifty has this track and sample mode that I don't actually know what they do, to be honest. I haven't really looked at the manual on that part in a while. But I think Shifty can do a sample and hold. 
Um, but maybe not. Let's 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 do something that I know can definitely do a sample and hold, which would be, for instance, the noise uh, one U noise thing up here. So uh, let's still put that LFO in, but we'll drop it into. Um, The input, I think, actually, is it, is it here? Um, no, those will be outputs, so it must be the input here, and then I think we trigger it. Okay, so that should work. Should give us something that makes a little more sense at least. And then we'll patch the sample value into x. Of course, it's, it would need attenuation to get the right uh, range that you want. A lot of this is me trying to decide, do I want to get a dedicated arpeggiator module of some kind, maybe even just like the 2HP ARP, because that's something that I'm really missing. Like, Vector Sequencer cannot do, cannot directly do, anyway, arpeggiation. So, I don't know. What if we just... It's just gonna keep things in scale, that's all. But too randomly. What I really need is to finally get my Zadar and then put a more complex envelope into this. That would be... That would be the way to do it. Okay, so I would say overall, yeah, I could. And it might be actually useful for me to get a full-on arpeggiator, even if it's just a 2HP ARP, because that's really simple. All right. That was just the first thing I wanted to test before we got into sort of rebuilding this song. <laughs> from the very beginning, so really not rebuilding, just starting again. Uh, okay, so I was watching a bunch of videos lately of um, and, and listening to some of the music of Emily Sprague. If you haven't heard her stuff, she's quite good, and she does a very good job of um, uh, layering drones lots of different drones together into something really interesting. The music has like some rhythm to it, but not that much. And I've noticed that in, did it work? It did, sort of, yeah. It did work in the end, it's just, in order to get the disting to really be a, like a decent arpeggiator, like you have to attenuate the incoming LFO and like to get the exact range that you want and so on and so forth, it'd be much easier to just have a dedicated arpeggiator module. So I think that's probably what I'm going to end up doing I'm to rejig some of my plans. But okay. So anyway, I'm going to see about doing something that involves drones because I was saying I most of my tracks in the last year at least have all been very well not melodic, well, melodic to a degree, but very note centric. <laughs> So let's just see if we can make anything interesting purely out of a drone here. So, I mean, I think the best option for that is most certainly going to be the CSL for making something that's interesting. And I think that we're going to have to mix the CSL. Um, unfortunately, I basically have this, this mixer up here, which is a little out of the way, but uh, we'll use it see where we can get. Let's 
So I'm definitely going to want the wave folder in some fashion or another to be involved in this thing. And I kind of had previously liked this weird stepped triangle thing. Let's just see what we get out of this right off the bat and then we'll, uh, we'll adjust. Interesting. Do you guys every once in a while get a little bit of... I'm using a new mic. I think I get... Do you, can you hear feedback coming through in the background right now? And it fades out, obviously, when I'm not talking because I have a noise gate. But right now, is there a, is there a whine in the background? And now it goes away. Because <laughs> if so, it's totally like conducting through my skin into the microphone, which is great. Okay. All right, so, and then we'll go in here. All right, I'm going to reset the modulation that I had going on here. Yeah, okay. Might just be me, hopefully. Might just be uh, feeding back through my headphones, even. I'm not using my little uh, shotgun mic anymore. I've got one. I got a little lapel mic instead so that I can move around a bit more. Okay, so get that. All right, so if we're going to do this as a drone, what we're going to need is a whole lot of modulation whole lot of modulation of a lot of different things to make this as interesting as possible. And I really want this to... I wonder if we want to filter this on the way out. Yeah, maybe, but not yet, not yet. So let's get some of the modulation going here first. Actually, not that one. I want, I think, is this one. Interesting. Actually, I feel like that's the wrong modulation now that I think of it. I think we're modulating the wave folder. Is that the right one? I want the sine wave from the top CSL going in and being merged with the bottom sine wave then being sent into the wave folder. Don't think it's that. Perhaps it was this one. No, that's definitely the one that affects the wave width or whatever it is, so it's this one. I'm guessing that this filter could be quite interesting. Okay. 
let's just get a bunch of randomness going in. I'll take marbles for now. Just to make this change up a bit, we'll put it into the index amount. We should make sure that this is running unquantized uh, steps that are sweeping between. Turn off the lock. Take another value. Dump that into CV control of that. And we'll dump another one into CV control of uh, maybe only the sine wave, right? So I don't think, yeah, this doesn't influence it. This will be crazy. <laughs> this could be an interesting case for the, uh, Quantizer, actually. Let's just see. Just curious. <laughs> yeah, no. That's going to be a little too weird. It would, at least it would have to be. Have to turn the rate way down, I guess. But I don't know. going to do the threshold or the uh, wave folder direct by CV it needs a bit more uh, it needs a bit more attenuation or something like that for that to work so okay we got something now let's just quickly get a um, we'll just take track three's pitch just so that we can send some notes in and see what we get. Get is pretty harsh, but... Um, okay, part three. Let's go into... What key are we in here? Because let's pick that key that we initially decided we were going to do. G major right now, so let's do B major. This is what we we're apparently going to do. So I think it's not actually quantizing what I'm sending in. Yeah. Sadly, it's not. That's okay. Okay. Um, we'll figure out an actual pattern for this later, but let's take this through a filter. And let's actually go out of the... Um, out of the Squawk Dirty to me. Oops. In stereo, so that we can widen this hopefully a bit. Okay, so we don't want to be in the low pass gate mode, thanks. on a drone like this. Okay. 
let's see. Let me just use a fader from Tetra Pad because I want to see what we can do with this wave folder. Yes, yes. Interesting. Only really has that beating effect in the exact setting we have the wave folder at right now. Let's also take... We can't take anything from the top one because it's not tuned at all. But let's also take pulse width since it can go sub. Might be a little too much, but... What about instead the uh, let's just listen to this final output on its own? Ah, interesting. How does that change? This is not going to be in tune at all, unfortunately, because of mm, actually, it is in tune. Some more modulation here. Let's have this thing cross modulate the other thing. Actually, it won't matter because that's only its sign. We can also use this uh, guy here. I don't remember what that cross modulates though, so we'll leave that alone for now. not actually affecting things as much as I figured they would. Might be because this needs more spread. Yeah. filter. Kind of like that. It's adding a little more texture anyway, but it's also very noisy.
is mostly coming from this, and I, like, these are not doing much of anything to the sound, actually. Oh, is this a plus minus? Oh, that's why it's a plus minus. Didn't realize it was an attenuator. I thought it was just an attenuator. <laughs> a little crazy now, but, but okay. the way that this is working for marbles, okay. Maybe this could do with like a chorus or something else coming into, let's go out of here into um, other effect. See what we can do with it. <laughs> I mean, that's just reverb, but and I think it's, yeah, that was like 100% wet. All right, I got to make sure I don't blow people's eardrums out. <laughs> what is, I don't even, I don't have the manual up, so I don't know what mode we're in, but. relatively cool so far. I feel like I want to VCA the level of that third input. with this generally for a start. Let's give you guys something to control. Let's see. Um, Alright, you can control the pulse width. Get this in here. You can control the pulse width of uh, the stepped triangle, which is blended into this, so it might be a little subtle, but you can control that on interface one if you want. Let me just make sure that everything's still set up. Yep. And as a reminder, that's how you use it. So where would, now we want something else from here. It's too bad I can't sample this. It would be nice to be able to play this on a loop, but. Yeah, just take interface out. Just modular space one, space 50 will do it.
to the oh. now why is that not coming through oh you know I might have to restart the bot free alpha software yep I definitely have to restart the bot one second Good. Try it again. Hopefully. That came through that time. It's probably going to be a pretty subtle change, but like. If you change it again, you should be able to hear it this time. You would think. <laughs> Wonder what the CV value actually does here. All right, let's give you something more interesting because that's causing problems if anything else. We will let you. Instead, you can control the resonance of that filter, the comb filter. <laughs> Don't blow it out. <laughs> That's at max, so you really can't you can't self oscillate it at least. Okay, from here, let's see about so. Minimum is, that's minimum, that's maximum. I can't remember if this turns into a 10 uverter after the fact. Actually, considering you already sent in 102 out of 127, I think it is an a 10 uverter. So try turning it down. I think it's just that, that I was attenuating the value you sent in. Ho, ho, ho. Try a new, uh, try a new lower value, and we'll make sure it works. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay. Maybe Platt's in chord mode now. <laughs> this was a risky one. <laughs> it gets pretty crazy. Okay, 
so plants in chord mode. Just straight out for now, but I feel like maybe I'll put it through Q Pass or Ring or Rainmaker. Let's find something that sounds decent enough here. this other channel for one second. Yeah, that's fair. I'm trying to make it so that people that don't realize that MIDI runs on a 1 to 128 or, well, 0 to 127 technically are, uh, understand what's going on. But I could change it. Actually makes it simpler because I have to do all these calculations to change it from percentage into what out of 128 and convert it from floating point and blah blah blah, so, yeah. Alright, I think I need the Platts manual here. I'm liking where this is going from a droning perspective so far. Alright, so Platts chords mode. Right, harmonics is the chord shape, timbre is the inversion, and the other one is the waveform, right? So, that's octaves. Fifth, sustained fourth. So major is all the way over on this end. I'm just going to take a better pitch uh, from part one. Very, very good on pre-fader through the 2HB verb. I don't know if it matches with what else we're doing here, but... This is a major ninth. Hmm. 
sound better like that on that inversion all the way down. Music Elevator, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Feel free to chime in if there's anything you'd like to see me do here. I actually kind of like this little... This little major back to major seventh transition. sounds like another part of the song though that I would like crossfade into because what does this sound like um yeah I was gonna say what does it sound like on its own hmm fast as the boss responds uh, it's pretty much instantaneous, at least from my perspective. I see the chat message come in and it changes things almost right away. Like that. I do like that. And I think I want something going into morph to move that around a little bit slowly. Let's just take another Tetrapad LFO because that's all I use Tetrapad for until I get my damn Tet one day in the distant future when machines have taken over. <laughs> with that CSL. It's interesting that the tuning of the upper one affects it so much. I mean, the, it affects the pitch of the bottom one so much. Because now it seems relatively out of tune, actually. No, oh, no, 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 no. Down two octaves, thanks. <laughs> Shouldn't have touched that fine tune. Can't find that sweet spot anymore. Yeah, 
You know, the only problem with sending that thing pre-fader is that the only control I have over its volume is either sending it into the pre-fader or not sending it, so... Well, I suppose other than I guess I could VCA this before it comes in. Anyway. Okay, so that LFO was okay. Now we want to control that harmonics level, so I think what we'll do is set up a little subsequence thingy on stages. Um, just get it from a tetra pad pad for now. Send that into harmonic. There, this one here. Don't want to glide. Why is it not setting the weird. It's plugged into the right thing, right? Yeah. Maybe it's not wide enough of a CV value. <laughs> Something's going on here. Must be added to the harmonics value. Yeah, it is. Okay. That makes things significantly simpler because it's either high or it's low. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Easy enough. Sad Skynet noises. <laughs> So in some some amount of pattern is what we want this gate to change on. We don't really have anything clocked yet, other than I suppose marbles. So let's just use marbles clock, and we'll let's turn off the bias here. getting not a very high percentage chance, but a chance on each clock tick to switch uh, from major to major seventh on plants. I think I've just got to fine tune when it happens. The other thing I wanted to experiment with on top of this was uh, kind of essentially putting rings in its tuning mode, so to speak, of turning up. If we can see, we'll turn up the dampening to like absolute max. Just do a 
simple warp for active. Still needs that warp for active. Part two. through lo-fi junkie actually needs to be more like washed out Feels like this could be another same way transition into, but I don't think it's good in the current state. Let's just see if we can. really subtle. It's easy to write over it essentially. Mm. Let's turn down the dampening a little bit. Max is a little much. we trigger some sample through rings in this mode? Let me do that. Needed that resonance back, did you? <laughs> for 
sec, I'm gonna be able to hear this. And I think I need to load it into something before I play it over the mix of it. Is that where it goes? Throwing this out of focus. <laughs> hmm, interesting. I never thought of putting bird song through the rings. That's kind of interesting. All right, let, let's take one of these. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, load. That may seem stereo, but whatever, we'll just take it in mono. What is that? It's one shot. Oh, that was it? Okay, that's not good. Not really helpful. So now we need to like trigger that. Uh, we'll take the gate. Let's put everything back in. reminds me of a um, uh, like a buoy in the ocean almost with this mode. Resonance gets intense. <laughs> Just curious. So I just like circumvented what we were doing, which is the mixture from the the Instro CSL. Instead of letting it go to both channels, I cut it and took the right channel and sent. Our little 
Ooh, we sound into it. Ooh, that's really good. Kind of surprising how much it, like, lost a lot of, like, the, the characteristics of this sound. I guess I just shift to one ear here. hear it just hmm. maybe what it means is this just to be down a little bit side. I think this is much better. there's a way to more easily like transition between those two things but like this is pretty abrupt and the only real way to control it is to plug in or not plug in something so well actually I wonder with the panning. What else could I do to... Because it would be nice to start here. so bad if I time it right. Hmm. Trade-offs, trade-offs, trade-offs. like I need them both to be combined in stereo prior to the filter so that I could pan them individually in the stereo field before they go in but I got rid of my mix up so I can't really do that I might be able to do it with planar if I can remember hmm
because that is really nice. I just wish that I didn't have to have it in the left ear all the time. So it was that versus going raw in here, which definitely needs some filtering. I could go through Q-Pass. So this seemed like a bit of overkill. We were in, the mode we were in in Endorphins is the, uh, the comb filter, so there's nothing else that will exactly emulate that. But. but I could, um, could see what I can get at a disting. Let's see. Let's find a filter. D5 is a filter. Okay. Over to here. And D5 has excess audio input. I probably would want a low pass filter, I think. It should be A. Maybe. Audio input, why is filter frequency? Can I not control the filter frequency myself? Oh, Y offset is parameter zero, okay. Not quite the same. But it's not far off. that with let's just pan it to the to that side side for comparison's sake now this one is much like dreamier Probably because it's going through a bunch of extra effects and all that. Hmm. If this started off just quiet, what would it be like? Alright, I think I'm going to stick with that. I think that's acceptable enough. At least for now. So, the other thing... Because I wanted to get... Add this in... This is a good... So I want to try to get this towards being more live steady. So this is a good start. So now I need something to transition into from here to make it more interesting. So um, let's take the Super Ego. 
everything's in a weird position now. So don't mind me while I fly off camera for a little while. <laughs> um, okay, so... Super Ego, come here. Go in. Oops, and we're gonna try something else to try to make another drone that we can crossfade into or transition to in some way or another. By the way, I do have a dedicated crossfader now coming. Oh, and I totally knocked that way the hell out. <laughs> Stay. There we go. Good. Ish. Sort of. Alright. So, let's maybe take what we had for morphogene. Probably isn't going to work well, but we can record another, uh, can record another, um, another splice after that if necessary. satanic right now. <laughs> but let's turn on Super Ego and see what we can get out of it. <laughs> that was not what I was expecting. Uh, okay. All effect, no dry, the full mix here. Really want to try to blow my speakers out, eh? <laughs> At least there's something that everyone knows you could definitely make a difference in this on, man. <laughs> Super Ego is really weird on speech uh, samples. Sounds really creepy. Doesn't really match anything, but let's just... This was pre-fader. Yeah, okay. It seems to have gotten stuck a little anyway here, so. Need to get like a third webcam or a fourth, one, no, fourth webcam to show the pedals to. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised that this is. problem with this sample is going to end up being that it's it is actually pitched right okay 
Let's try a different splice, because I don't know how well that's going to work. Let's, uh, let's record a splice out of a simulator here. We'll pull that for now. We'll take uh, another channel. Let's take channel three. Okay, channel select, channel three. Let's find something. Footsteps could be interesting because it's not really pitched. Just take one of these at random. And so set up. Let's clear that reel just because that was a pain. And we will record. Oh, wait. Need to put it into one shot mode. very short. <laughs> Let's see what we got out of it. Oh, I wasn't even recording this. Whoops. I need to have a sound on sound meter on the other side. We'll loop this for a little bit too. That what we got. Nothing. There we go. Oh my god, I hate getting morphogen to green. As soon as you take your hand off the damn knob, no longer green. Come on. Ah, whatever, it doesn't really need to be that pitch, so, okay. What does something like this give us out of the Super Ego? <laughs> Nothing. Super Ego is probably looking for pitch. Can we get anything even in the other moods? It's just going to pick up on the noise from the crunching. All right. Not a good idea. Look at that. Oops. Try this again, but with a different sample. We will use. Let's use one of Give Kids drones. Uh, four voice ambience sounds. C minor seven, C minor nine. This is he have in here. Oh yeah, I have Kalimba samples from ages ago in here apparently. Yeah, sure. Oh crap. No. What did I do? Okay in here. Yeah, there we go. Load. So what does that even do in Super Ego? Ah, well, no, let's record it into Morphogene first, otherwise it's going to be...
weird. Why is the gene size so small? I might not have recorded it properly. Just a sec. Do this again. Oops. Have it in the other mode. Okay, so that is zero up. Might not be enough signal. Super Ego to pick up. This is the automatic version of or mode on Super Ego takes a good deal of signal input to actually notice that it needs to switch or needs to like pick up a new thing to sample. So um, occasionally it gets through. But yeah, let's instead, let's uh, turn up the, um, let's turn up the uh, input volume for uh, Morphogene again, since it now that new firmware has the nice, nice uh, settings for it. Just gotta remember how to do that. Um, auto level is hold record and press shift. Don't remember which one's which. Let's try that. Seems louder already. Try Super Ego again. That's a nice other drone. Uh, do I have another power cable for a pedal sitting around? Not easily accessible. I was going to put the Super Ego through the, uh, the micro pod so that I could tune it down. Well, I guess I could also do that through the Morphogene. Not by octaves, but yeah, now it's not going to be loud enough because it's not fast enough. <laughs> is on two, right? So yeah, I feel like you could transition between No, I think maybe you'd transition. Oh, all of it's 
too abrupt. Hmm. I suppose if I slowly faded out the ox on this, but, but it's a very sensitive knob. to figure out how I would go be between these two. Anyone's got any suggestions? Definitely speak up. I'm trying to figure out because I like like this. Does this exist with these? Although, how much difference is this LFO really making? And is so damn freaking sensitive. I wish I could run this not on pre fader, but it sounds so good that way. Post fader is like way too much. <laughs> How about if I use the gain? Oh, that's far better. That's far better than using the oxen. Okay, so can I finagle this? Actually worked pretty well. I'm not unhappy with that. All right, so again, that's right, that's morphogen, super ego, and out. Still got. We definitely are probably going to keep that ins that CSL thing in the background for a large portion of the quote set that I'm making, just because it ties things together nicely.
upgrade the game to zero, then we can completely switch over. So then what might we, like, add in from here? We could send something else in on that left channel, like a switch or melt. Or, well, it can't be melted. I guess it would have to be a switch between them. Hmm. Because now we'd want to add something or bring something else in. What about what we got on the assimilator? Let's just sample some samples for a little while. Uh, we'll put it in the B input on one here so that we can turn the game up. Oops. Okay, so we're starting on five. Let's load something in. we got in here. Hmm. The base is interesting. we should start with is the techno kicks right <laughs> pretty good kicks but hmm I do like that I do like that Just for sake of simplicity, I wouldn't come in on the same channel because we don't really want them to share the effects. We want that down, we want that on pre fader. Come in on channel 3 instead. There's Rainmaker as an Oxen, maybe? Hmm. Maybe we'll take a disting effect of some kind as an Oxen. this thing got. Let's see. What could be interesting for that? Let's push in an oxen. Let's try... Oh, 
fake crusher. Phaser, maybe. It's on C7. Okay, let's do this as an oxen. So we'll come out into the audio input on X. And the audio phase shift output is B. Ah, not long enough. <laughs> Grab you later. Channel 3 on Oxen 1, okay. Pre-fader, so that we can hear this doing its thing. We need to turn the number of stages. I need to sweep this with this phaser, so I'm not going to do that. Let's try. Go to mono course, L6. X is audio input, Z is wet, dry, A is blended, and B is wet. All we want is wet, so that's good. Okay. What do you sound like? Nothing. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, low pass filter. Turned off. Give it a little more. And it's a little too subtle for a send effect. <laughs> about a tape delay. Okay, for tape delay we got X is the input. Oops. Uh, Should have this with the. I'll do post fader and see what this sounds like. Yeah, we should be getting just the mixed side of things. Smack the microphone around some more. <laughs> I think we might need a not aux send on this. We might need something that's better. Uh, let's go straight through. And then maybe we would try the bit crusher. Let's see. Just a little bit of it. Maybe. C8. Okay, so no more send. We're going. Might even be able to steal a long cable. Yep, straight in on X. And then signal output is on A. Z is the. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wasn't also bit reducing the noise to make it very uh noisy makes it sound distorted <laughs> I 
I wonder if this should be sent into that left input. Let's just see. Um, where is it coming from here? I mean, we'll have to do a switch if so, but so. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, all right. So then what we need is for this thing to run in switch mode, which I don't think who, this, this guy who has put together this app on the modes app that I've talked about a bunch on iOS, like it's great that he put this together, but holy cow, you need to update it. Like It's missing all the algorithms that have been added in like October of last year. At least I think I should double check, but no, yeah, it's definitely missing them. Which is annoying because I kind of need them. Well, if, given that it's a sequential switch. We can use shifty, actually. Okay, so what we'll do is... No, we can't use shifty. Shifty only goes one way. I'm definitely thinking of getting rid of it because I find that more often than not, what I want to do is send any one of multiple signals to a single location and not one signal to any number of different locations or I need to be able to flip back and forth between them and shifty of course cannot do one of those directions so holy cow that is a that resonance is getting even more sensitive now that I've unplugged one side if I plug tames it a lot by uh, plugging in the this guy <laughs> Okay, um, oh yeah, I've got the distinct manual, don't I? Let's find it. Okay, so it's somewhere very close to the top. Index, and we want... Oh, dudes, where is it? Where is it? Um, the switch. Shift registers. Switch. N1. Okay. Right. This is the algorithm that's always hard to find because M and N on this thing are very close to one another. <laughs> How does it work again? We're saying X to Y, X to A, and Y to B, or X to B and Y to A. So by using only one input, the algorithm effectively directs an input to one of two outputs. Like by using only one output, the algorithm chooses between two inputs, right? So X is either A is either X or Y. So we want X to be one of the inputs. We want Y to be the other of the inputs. And we want A, which needs to now go up. Here to be the choice. So that's good. Also need this to be in a particular mode. What did it say again? Uh, we need mode one where Z is a trigger, which is mode one on parameter zero. Okay. Mode 
hold on. Parameters here, yeah, okay. Yeah, alright, so... Then we just need to send a rising edge into Z, which we'll just use this for for now, but... So, right now we got that. switch. Okay. So that was from originally we have this going with where's my you switching it's odd switch wrong because it's not actually switching. Let's see what it said again. Positive going input edge toggles the switch. That was the mode I was in. CV is a switch or trigger, you may like to turn the Z knob slightly counterclockwise. Okay. Done. How about now? Yes, okay. Now it's working. So we had started with. maybe less resonance, but <laughs> that's what you all decided on. And then we transition from there into Switch. Start playing. Yeah, okay. It's it's not a hundred percent there, but I like where it's headed. So yeah, that went I think significantly better than the last thing I was putting together. I'm liking this whole layering weird drones together and seeing how they work. CSL is especially interesting in the background. But with that, I think that I am going to wrap it up for tonight. That was a fun one. Um, thanks everybody for sticking around. Thanks for playing with the uh, resonance, even though sometimes I was like, oh, I have to pull these off. <laughs> At least you have something you know you're controlling this time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, of course you're gonna, you're gonna blast it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Take away your privileges on the bot. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I will be back on Saturday, and we will continue this. I don't think I'm going to tear this one down, but I'm glad that I started from scratch. Again, just a lesson. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to just tear everything down. So let's... Uh, I'll have a quick look, see if anyone else is around, and then we will... Uh, jet off. Otherwise, I'll see you all on Saturday. <laughs>